The Lost Caverns of Ixalan is shaping up to be a set that players are going to remember. This set contains chase cards, it has decent reprints within the set, and there's a lot of cards that are showing up in the spoiler season that are likely to find a home in multiple formats. In today's video, we're going to be discussing some of these cards and what players can probably look forward to going forward from Lost Caverns of Ixalan. The Lost Caverns of Ixalan is shaping up just like I thought it would. Welcome back everyone, MTG Moxman here. Thanks again for hanging out with me on my channel today. And what I mean by that is about 12 days ago, I put a video saying the price scheme, the idea that another set would look bad and overpriced, which was Ravnica Remastered, and a set like the Lost Caverns of Ixalan being in standard and a set that they want to promote is starting to look better and better. This set really does have a lot going for it and there's a lot that players should consider when they're looking at maybe purchasing this set, buying cards from this set. When we saw the original spoilers, I already said they started to look good, they're kind of impressive, and it kind of surprised me that a fourth quarter product was going to look as good as the Lost Caverns of Ixalan does. It really does look like an impressive product. I shouldn't say it looks like it is. It is an impressive product. It just is. I like what I've seen, I like the artwork, the style, I even read the story, it's very decent, and the cards they showed us today lend more credence to me that this is going to be a set that is going to be well thought of and well remembered. I want to say it to Wizards now, it looks like they've done a good job thus far, but there's a few things that I'm hoping I still see, and we'll get to that during the video. You know, when you started seeing the early spoilers with all the gods and stuff, that was pretty good. They gave us the chase cards, things like Mana Crypt, it, things got a little bit better. Now they've started showing us things like Chalice the Void and even more cards. And you gotta say, yes, this is gonna have some good chase cards. I like it. But the idea that Mana Crypt will be a hard to get card definitely plays into what I thought. And now we start seeing some of the spoilers from this set and they're pretty impressive. Let me show you the first one here. And this, of course, is a reprint. The Growing Rights, okay? Now, the Growing Rights, um, I never got this in the original one, and I like the idea of it. I don't know how much play this is going to be, like, you know, in, in a standard deck right now, even though you get, oh, you can tap for one mana for each creature. It seems like it's a good card, but games don't go that long, especially in standard. Most people are dead by turn three or four, depending on the deck you're playing against, and depending on how your, you know, posture is set up for your gameplay this kind of card is not really going to see a lot of action right now. It's great that it's been reprinted. There are other decks that will utilize it and try to play with it later, and it keeps the price in check. It wasn't a really pricey card to begin with, but it had enough of a price tag that this card will have some players going, hey, I kind of I kind of want to get my hands on this. And for me, it kind of reminds me of Dungeons & Dragons with the fungus people, the mycenids, underneath the Underdark, so I'm kind of impressed with this. It's just nice to see it here. I know it's not an expensive card, though. Now, this one gives me a little more of a chill. This is Vito, the uh, fanatic of whatever. I can't pronounce that last one. Now, when we pay a closer attention, this is a one black, one white, two other legendary creature vampire demon with flying. He's a 4-4. Four, four. But it says, whenever you sacrifice another permanent, you gain two life. If this is the first time this ability has resolved this turn, if it's the second time, each opponent loses two life. If it's the third time, create a 4-3 white and black vampire demon token with flying. Okay, when you think about standard right now, and you look at all the cards I'm showing you on the screen, things from Evolving Wilds to the New Capenna Maestro lands that get sacrificed and get you land, you can, you can make this guy work. In standard, he is going to be a card you can play with, and you should expect to see these type of sacrifice decks going, where players are going to nuke things two or three times in a, in a turn to kind of boost things up. And they're going to try to find ways to make this work for them. Ca cards like Candy Trail from WoW, that's going to allow them to look ahead and start setting up their deck. Other cards you see here that will eventually, of course, rotate out, but for now, these things are all still there. These are cards that players need to realize are going to be around. And that's why he gives me a bit of a chill because we haven't even seen all the cards going forward, right? These are just cards that are in the past right now from the last couple of sets. Imagine what could happen to a card like Vito going forward. He saw play in the first one. He's going to see play now. 
I'm really, I think he's kind of cool. I like the idea of him. Um, he won't be a, an infinite turn combo type thing, but if you set this up properly and you build your deck around it, finding ways to recycle him in case he gets killed or board clearanced off, there, there are ways to keep him around. There's even ways of phasing him in and out nowadays that you, you can protect him pretty well. So I like the idea of this card. He's pretty disgusting. Now, when we're talking about Sahili, the sun's brilliance, the de-sparked planeswalker, it says here, it's a 2-2 two, two for 2, 1 blue, 1 red. Legendary creature, human artificer. Um, when you see here, it's 1 red, 1 blue. Tap. Create a token that's a copy of another target creature or artifact you control, except it's an artifact in addition to other types. It gains haste. Sacrifice it at the beginning of the end step. So when you think about bringing around something like a Suchi Cave Guard, that thing's still around from the Brothers War. This thing's an 8-8 eight, eight with Ward 4. If you copy it, and you can attack with multiple copies of this guy, that's kind of beastie already. When you have other cards, like the, uh, what is it, the, the mechanic here, okay, the machinist. When you look at him and he lowers the casting cost of artifacts, it means you can get the Suchi out that much faster. You can get the bigger, kind of heavy-hitting creatures from the Brothers War to come into the, to the battlefield even faster. And again, we don't know what's going forward. There will be connecting cards, and they don't have to be red-blue. I just threw a few up here to give you an idea. And of course... Sahili, before she gets desparked, you can see we can do all kinds of crazy stuff there, letting her scry and do all kinds of fun stuff as the low-level Planeswalker. There are combinations here. There is synergy that is going to play extraordinarily well. But not every card is showing its true colors yet. When you look at the Miso Tyrant, right? This guy, I love the look of him, okay? He just, I don't know, I, I think the idea of bringing Fungus back from like the good old days of Fallen Empires really appeals to me as a nostalgic older player. This thing is a one green, one black, one generic legendary creature, Elder Fungus. Love the Elder with the Fungus. These cross names they're doing really will lend into a multiple, like not multiple, like a different way of building decks because they will, they will connect with different cards you won't expect five years from now. You don't know it yet, but it's coming. They've been doing this more and more. Now this card has Trample and it says, the Miso Tyrant's power and toughness are equal to the number of creatures you control that are fungi and or sporlings. At the beginning of your end step, create, create X11 one, one black fungus creatures tokens. This creature can't block, where X is the number of times you descended. Now, descended is a new mechanic, and it says you descend each time a permanent card is put into your graveyard from anywhere. So Descend being a new mechanic, you may not see all the linking cards yet, but when you start, when you just look at the cards I gave you with Vito, all those different ways of nuking low-level artifacts to pump out all kinds of crazy creatures each turn, building up the Miso Tyrant's power, and he has Trample, this lends a lot of possibilities for the synergy and power to knock people out on a couple of turns in. This can be a really disgustingly powerful card, and there are some artifacts that allow you to, um, you know, tap for any color mana so you can blend them into other decks just keep this kind of card in mind now we also have the skull spore fungus right another card from the set and this just lends more of that stuff where you can double creatures power until end of turn there's there's a lot going on here there's a lot to think about when we're talking about the lost caverns of Ixalan. and that's just a few cards we're at the beginning of all the crazy spoilers we still have to go through and no i didn't list every card not every card appeals to me the same way, although I'm sure there are lots of combinations you guys could drop in the comment sections for stuff you've already seen as well, and the possibilities. Let's face it, this set is going to appeal to a lot of players. There's lots of players who like dinosaurs. We got lots of new dinosaurs. We got new legendary creatures for people, and they can blend new legendary creatures into decks they're working on. This can be anything from Commander, Crazy Casual, to EDH. I don't care. I'm saying the possibilities are there. If you don't see them yet, they are likely to happen with players with a lot more skill and ability instead of this old fogey mox man start really ripping into these decks to build crazy combinations with the cards we've seen. I can only imagine what is going to happen about a year from now, a few more sets in, a few more combinations have come along to see, number one, if Standard comes back alive as good as I think it's going to. Players can get all angry and ah and all this, I'm not playing it. I still see it happening. It may not be happening everywhere yet, but there's definitely an interest in bringing this to see what players will do. I also will look at this stuff and say, players will be interested in this set. It has enough of a vibe, especially for the end of the year, to appeal to an audience to make them think 
about playing this kind of set. To think about buying cards, singles, boxes, packs, to just see what they get for your pure luck. The chance for the chase card, a decent rare or mythic, as well as cards you'll probably just blend into different decks as you're playing at a draft night, at an F&M, or maybe just playing with some friends at the kitchen table. There's a lot to unpack with this type of set. I haven't seen these kind of combination ideas in a while where I actually looked and said, this is going to be decent. It's weird that it's fourth quarter, but it shows that Wizards of the Coast is trying. And I'm just saying trying right now. I'm not going to give them a pass, you know, collect $200. I'm just saying they're trying. And that gives me some hope that, you know, maybe the R&D just keeps doing a good job and the rest of the company doesn't mess up, then maybe, maybe, this game is going to have a chance to spark forward, move into a new era, and kind of grow again as a game where we can appreciate it more and complain about it less. I'm hopeful, and I think that's a good thing. Now, if you made it this late in the video, I want to thank you all for hanging out, hanging out with the Moxman and chilling here on the channel. I hope you enjoyed today's content as much as I enjoyed hanging out with you and discussing these spoilers. I, of course, will bring more spoilers to the channel if I think of any crazy stuff, or if you can think of some stuff and you want to drop me an email, hit me up at langathotmail.com. Love to hear your thoughts on what you think is happening with Ixalan. And of course, with the price being the way it is, the price is right right now. It is not expensive, not overpriced, and has a lot of appeal to people. Looking forward to seeing you guys. Have a great day today, and thanks for stopping by. We'll see you all tomorrow for another video. Hey guys, welcome back to the end credits. This is the area where you get to see all the amazing supporters we have on this channel supporting the daily content each and every day of the week. Thanks again to my patrons, my supporters. I'll see you all tomorrow. You made it. You're wondering why you're here, but you made it. So first off, you made it to the end of the video. This is the Ramble Jamble, and of course, you made it this far, you might as well stick around a little further and listen to me ramble about just senseless stuff that happened in the day. Now, in this case, though, we're going to keep talking about magic today because I found, I found today some spoilers good. I find the direction Wizards of the Coast taking right now good. I'm still really mad at them, which is good. I should be. But the R&D department and what they've been doing... It looks pretty good right now. At least in my opinion, I like what I'm seeing. Even giving us Marvel, if they keep it completely separate and you just wanted to play with it and have a good time, I think some of the ideas of cards, I hope, you know, I hope they do some of the cards with some good flavor. Like I want to see Wolverine be indestructible. Juggernaut should be indestructible. There's lots of fun stuff like I mentioned in yesterday's video that they could do that I'm hoping to see. It gives me hope, which is great. The potential to be happy and joyful and say, this was a great idea. Or... You're hoping you don't see the negativity and say, why? Why would you do that? That's ridiculous. I mean, I'm just saying, there's two sides of a coin, but I'm hoping for the hopeful side. Glass half full kind of thing right now. And that has me excited. Now, play boosters, I'm interested to see what they do with them. And it's good they gave us a product like Ixalan that's kind of stacked at the end of the year because we're being rubbed the right way right now. Players, I'm seeing a little bit of interest in build. People want to go to the pre-release and try this stuff out. Standard, much as people want to say it's dead, it looks like there's signs of life from the stores I'm seeing. So I'm curious to see how it's all going to play out. And let's face it, some of these cards are going to find home in Commander. You think Vito's not going to find its way into a Commander deck for vampires? Yeah, right. The guy drains life. The guy hurts every opponent. And you can create creatures with it. Vito's got, he's a kind of a stacked guy. He's got some good stuff going for him. Interesting to see what they're going to do. Can't wait. I'm either going to be, I guess, because I didn't expect much. I'm really enjoying it. And that's a good thing. It's like when you see a movie you thought was going to be horrible because you heard bad stuff and you go in and you're like, this was better than I expected. And that's how I feel right now. Thanks a lot for hanging out, guys. Thanks for being here and stopping by the Ramble Jamble. Looking forward to seeing you guys all tomorrow. Now, well, now I'm going to go relax a little bit. This was relaxing, but it's not part of the relaxation day.